Hello there, people of the internet. So I have a rifle that I was not really expecting to get my hands on, but I found one for a pretty good price. And I was like, you know what? Ah, that'll go great with my collection. Because uh, I've already got a couple of Carcano rifles, Carcano rifles, however it is you feel like pronouncing that. But I have now in my possession an old, uh, this is the Calvary Carbine, the ones that have the funky looking bayonet at the end. I was expecting not to like this rifle. Like, whenever I got it, I was like, ah, yeah, that'll be cool to have, but I don't really think I'll ever be actually using it. And then I actually got it, and <laughs> I actually started using it. And I tell you what, guys, this is probably one of my favorite Carcanos. I want to say thanks for the support, sorry for the interruption, but if uh, you do want to support what I'm doing here, uh, Utreon and Patreon, links in the description below. Obviously, the things I'm doing here are not free, and if the more people that help out, the better content I'm able to make, and the more often I'm able to make it. So, like I said, links below. And I think a lot of that has to do with, like, just the weight of it. I like how, like, I just, I just like everything about this thing, dude. I was not expecting to like this rifle. Like, these rifles are just so funky, and they look weird, and, like, Whenever I was looking at like photos and videos of them, they just, I, I, I was not a fan. I was not a fan of these. And then I got one and I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. Now, a lot of these rifles, these Carcano, Carcano, uh, Calvary carbines that are coming into the country right now are coming out of Ethiopia. And if you're getting a rifle from Ethiopia, then it's going to be very hit or miss as to whether or not you're getting a rifle that, uh, is going to have a is going to have a barrel that is usable a lot of them i mean back during whenever they were put in storage in ethiopia a lot of the uh ammunition back then basically all the ammunition back then i'm looking for brass on the ground <laughs> while i'm trying to make this video a lot of the ammunition back then was corrosive and if you were an Italian being pushed out of Africa and, you know, you drop your rifle and somebody picks it up and they throw it into a stockpile, I doubt that they worried about cleaning the rifles. So then they just sat in some African warehouse for a hundred years with rifles that had barrels that were, you know, not to be cleaned. So uh, it's very hit or miss as to whether or not you're actually going to get a rifle like that. This one I do not believe was an African one. At least not an Ethiopian one, because it doesn't have the stampings that a lot of Ethiopian carbines have. And even if it was, I don't believe that this one was fired before cleaning, because the inside of the barrel, or fired, yeah, it fired after using corrosive ammunition, because the inside of the barrel of this thing is actually pretty damn decent. And I've already shot this thing, that's how I know I like it so much and uh, I know it hits at point of aim. So I got lucky whenever I got this one. And the reason why I think they didn't get the chance to shoot is because this thing has obviously been pelted with some kind of shrapnel. Whoever had this rifle did not have a very good day. You can see right here, the barrel band has all sorts of little pits and whatnot taken out of it. That's not rust pits, that is shrapnel pits. And we have it all along here, along the stock as well. We have it on the back of the receiver, right back here. Even the front sight blade right here got hit with a piece of shrapnel from whatever the hell happened with the owner of this rifle. And I'm willing to bet that the owner of this rifle probably did not get the opportunity to use this rifle, fire corrosive ammunition through it. And as a result, today, I mean, the bore in this thing, despite the fact that the rifle looks like ass, is the bore is actually really, really nice. Okay, so I have somewhere here, a in block clip monlicker clip here of 65 carcano we're gonna cram this bastard into this bastard and we're gonna go ahead and send a couple of rounds down range i really really like this rifle 65 carcano is a really light hitting round even out of a carbine like this and man this is just an all-around pleasure to shoot ha <laughs> The only bad part about these Carcano rifles is that they do hit exceptionally high. So I have to like aim at the bottom of my target at the 40 yards that we're at to hit the middle of the target. And whenever we take this out to a distance, which we are going to do, then I have to aim like exceptionally under the target. Now this is just hand loaded ammunition here. And I'm using two, six, four diameter bullets. 
as opposed to the 268 diameter bore that uh, the Carcanos are known to have. But this does not seem to be that big of an issue with this particular rifle. Some rifles, huge issue, but this particular one, not really that big of a deal. I can still smack my steel target at 100 yards. Ask me how I know. I really like this rifle. <laughs> As a matter of fact, whenever I got this rifle and I fired a couple of rounds through it, I liked it so much that I spent the rest of the night loading 6.5 Carcana brass so I could take this rifle out today. <laughs> okay, well, I fired a couple of rounds here. Let's go ahead and take this old girl out to a distance. We're going to go out to about 100 yards and I'm going to put some rounds down range. I was not, here, I'm going to push this down so I don't actually chamber around here. I was not expecting to like this rifle. I really was not. Like, whenever I bought it, I was like, God, that's gonna be a waste of money. And there's no way in hell I'm gonna like the rifle. And even if I do like the rifle, there's no way in hell it's gonna shoot. These things are known to, to just have the bores absolutely destroyed in them because of how they were stored over in Africa. And that's just the nature of the beast. But this one, oh boy, did I get lucky with this one. And even though the sight has been damaged, it's only like the front of the sight that's been damaged and the rear of the sight is actually still usable. As you can see, I'm making shots on target and we're gonna step out to a further distance and I'm still gonna make shots on target with this thing. I actually really like this thing. I'm probably gonna take this hunting with me, but if I do that just because of like laws and restrictions in the area that I'm in and some of the places that I go for hunting, I will have to take off the bayonet of this thing, but that's not really that difficult to do, a little screw right there. But, I like the idea of taking this thing out for hunting because I have my uh, 6.5 Troop Special that I've used a couple of times, but the 6.5 Troop Special is actually heavier than this one. This one is like lighter weight than my sporterized uh, 1891 Carcano, which is really saying something because this one has a bayonet on it. Okay, let's head out to a distance here. This is a 1937 production rifle, as a matter of fact, so I don't think this is gonna have any issues with gain twist rifling. 1937, then it says XV beside that, and it says FP on the side of the receiver, probably a manufacturer's mark. Nope, this is a tourney, I think. There's a lot of rust on this receiver. The rifle does not look very good on the outside, but man, the bore is immaculate. Okay, let's go. Let's go to a distance. Okay, so now we're out here at 100-ish yards, and uh, let's go ahead and send some lead down range and see if we manage to hit our target. I have no idea where to keep this camera, so I'm just gonna keep it right there and hope that that's good enough. Let me move my piece of wood here. I don't, I don't like that, that's not stable enough. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead, send some lead. I'm not sure how high this shoots. Not positive on it, but let's send some lead anyway. I think that was the clink of steel. I'd like to believe that was the clink of steel. Let's send us another round here. That one might have been a little too low. I'm trying to compensate for <laughs> where this thing actually hits. Cause like I said, I'm not sure how high or low it hits. Let me try just aiming at the bottom of the target. See if we hear the clink of steel. I think we hit it the first time, but let's send another one. Suddenly smelling a skunk. Huh. Very fascinating. Well, I don't see a skunk around here and there's no trees for him to hide in. So I have no idea what that smell is. Let's go ahead. I got another in-block clip here. Let's try that again. I'm gonna try aiming a little higher. Maybe this isn't shooting as low as I think it is. All right, that was a hit on the steel. All right, so this is only shooting, hell, probably about a foot high compared to my other Carcanos, which shoot like two and a half feet high with this ammunition. So this one is doable. Another clink of the steel. Hell yeah. I wonder, how's the ejector on this thing? Yeet. Ejector works. Send another round here. As a matter of fact, I'm aiming at the bottom of the steel and it looks like the bottom of the steel is getting tore up. I'm gonna aim at the center of the steel and let's just see if we hear a clink of, a clink of steel down there. I don't think I heard a clink of steel on that one, so. 
very good chance that we overshot it because I was aiming center target. Let me go back to just aiming at the bottom of the target here because I'm not sure where I'm hitting. There we go. That was the steal. All right, last round in this magazine, I think. We still have another round inside of this in-block clip, which is why it did not drop free. I thought we uh, were out. <laughs> the steel is like falling down at this point, but I should still be able to hit it with this last round here. Let's go ahead and send us another round of 6.5 Carcano, Carcano downrange. All right. And the steel is basically out of view now. So no matter what, I would have to go down there and uh, bring the steel back up. Okay, take a seat in my office, why don't you? So, like I was saying, I was not expecting to uh, actually like this rifle. I was not, I really was not. I was thinking, oh God, my chair is breaking. <laughs> Welcome to the office. I was thinking, like whenever I bought this thing, I was literally thinking that I was gonna have buyer's remorse. And I was like, God, this is just gonna sit in my closet. And these things are so awkward and ugly and it's not gonna shoot and it's just gonna gather dust and I'm eventually just gonna freaking resell it. I might make a video on it and you know, that's it. And I'll set it aside and never touch it again. But lo and behold, I actually really, really like this rifle. And <laughs> I have no idea how or why, but it does not seem to shoot nearly as high as my other Carcano Carcano rifles. So maybe that's because the front sight is perhaps a little bit higher in retrospect to the rear sight than the other Carcano rifles. But this right here, like seriously, it only shoots, hell, probably less than a foot uh, high at 100 yards. I'd say probably like six to eight inches approximately. And that is absolutely doable. And granted, I am only using 264 diameter bullets. I bet if I used actual 268 diameter bullets in this Carcano, it would hit pretty, pretty spot on to where it is that I'm wanting it to hit. I know anytime I go from any of my other Carcanos uh, from 268, which is the required uh, projectile size, to 264, which is the size that I typically use because they're a lot cheaper and easier to find. Whenever I go from the larger size to the smaller size, they always seem to hit higher for some reason. Like 264 out of a Carcano, all of my other Carcanos are like two and a half feet high. And this one's like eight inches high at 100 yards. I was not expecting to like this rifle, but my God, lightweight rifle, light hitting ammunition, like light recoil, but man, 6.5 Carcano is still nothing to scoff at. I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't want to get shot with it. I mean, it's definitely more powerful than a lot of uh, other rounds that are you know, on the market today. Of course, granted, I still sit behind my decision whenever I say this is an ugly fucking rifle. I will say though, despite the fact it is ugly, it is cool and it's less ugly whenever the bayonet's out. Like, that is a really freaking weird bayonet attachment there. But whenever the bayonet is actually extended, then this <laughs> rifle actually looks kind of cool. Uh, I went ahead and I actually stuck, this is not the bolt for these rifles. Uh, this right here is a bolt from an 1891 straight handle bolt. And I really like the straight handle bolts as opposed to the uh, bent handle bolts that actually come with the rifles. Someone's gonna go in the comments and yell, did you headspace the rifle before you shot it? Yes, I headspace the rifle before I shot it. I headspace all of my rifles before I shoot them if they're military surplus without the original bolt. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for watching. I do appreciate your time. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are down below. I actually, like I said, I actually really like this rifle. Actually, let me get you guys' opinion real quick. I'm gonna let you guys decide what I do here. This stock is very messed up. We, I mean, you guys saw how messed up it is. Actually, I'm gonna set you guys like that. The stock is very messed up and it's been like scratched and dinged and pitted and all sorts of stuff. But man, underneath like the color of the wood and the grain of the wood, this stock would be gorgeous if I were to like uh, clean it up and refinish it and whatnot. I don't think I'm gonna do that because this is an original rifle, an original configuration, but man it's like a it's like a dark wood fine grain stock and it would be gorgeous if i went through and decided to redo it i'll let you guys decide down below uh ultimately i don't think i'm gonna get around to doing it like i said just because it is in its original configuration 
but it would be different if this was like a desirable rifle like these rifles are just not they're not desirable <laughs> not at all despite the historical significance I feel like just cleaning up the stock a little bit to really bring out what it would originally look like would not mess it up to the point to where it would lose much value because these rifles don't exactly have a lot of value behind them anyway. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'll let you guys decide on that, whether or not I clean up the stock. Okay, back to the office we go. Thanks for watching, folks. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. Description down below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check that out. And, uh... Do you guys like Carcano Carcano rifles? Carcano Carcano is a shame how I have to do that. People always yell at me and they're like, this is the proper way to pronounce it and if you do it any other way, you're wrong. But man, like down in the comments, there's a lot of people that are doing it differently than they are and they're insistent that their way is right. And it's just freaking button heads. And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter how you pronounce it. At least I say it doesn't matter how you pronounce it. And people that are, you know, on board with you pronounce it properly or you're wrong, God forbid you come across anyone with a freaking accent or something, right? God forbid you come across somebody from another country who pronounces something slightly different than you do. I feel like that's one of those things that people just have to get over. If your biggest concern is how a YouTuber pr pronounces the name of a rifle from a hundred something years ago, then man, you must have one fucking luxurious life. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. I do appreciate your time. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.